With the new Apple update, you can now turn your iPad into a computer. Not only can you pair your keyboard, but you can also pair a mouse. And this comes with a bunch of cool features like easy navigation, quick gestures, and cursor customization. I'll also show you some of the new iPhone updates. So guys, let's get into it. To get started, you of course are going to need the latest software updates, so just head on over to settings and under general, you will see right at the top there, software updates. If you click on that, you'll either see a prompt to update or you might already have the latest update, which is 13.4. Once that is done, grab your keyboard and mouse because we're going to connect them up to your iPad. So again, under settings, we're gonna click on Bluetooth now. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you will see other devices. And over there, you will see the mouse. You just tap on that to connect it. And once your mouse is connected, the same goes for your keyboard. Just go to to other devices, tap on your keyboard and it'll be connected and ready to go. So now that you've got the latest software update as well as your mouse and keyboard connected to the iPad, as you can see, you essentially have a brand new computer and we are ready to make some magic happen. When you first hook up your mouse to your iPad, this is what the cursor actually looks like. But if you head on over to settings, there are two places where you can customize things a bit further. So under general, you will see trackpad and mouse, and there are just a couple of things you can do here. But if you head on over to accessibility, which is the second place you can change things up, and tap on pointer control, this is where you can really customize things a lot with regards to the cursor. So in the first option, you can change the contrast of the cursor to make it a bit darker and easier for you to see. Then if you want a bit more pizzazz, you can add a color around the cursor so you can choose from red blue green pretty much your standard colors and also change the stroke of the color around the cursor make it thinner or thicker after that you can change the size of the cursor so make it really big and easy to see or somewhere in the middle it's completely up to you and then you've got this option called animations and now watch as i go over accessibility it animates to the button of accessibility but if i turn that off and then hover over accessibility you see it just simply highlights it and that's all and then finally you can also adjust the scroll speed so right over here i can make it quarter slow and then as you can see it slows it down dramatically. Now that you have your iPad set up like a brand new computer, let me show you some nifty things you can do using the mouse. So first up, I'm gonna use the mouse and the cursor to open up the notes app, but then if I head into the docking section, I click and I hold down on Spotify and drag it to the right hand side, as you can see, it is split screened. From there, I can then change the variation of the split screen, again, just by using the cursor. And if I go into the dock and click and hold on Safari, drag it into the center, now I've got some applications to choose from. So I've got my website over here, and just over there, you'll see a little home button. And what this does is it rotates the applications. Being able to toggle through apps and even split screen them like this makes working so much more productive. I really think you guys are gonna love this, so try it out with your mouse. Then on to some quick tips, and if you right click on any application, it opens up a quick menu for that application. So depending on which one you right click on, you will get a number of different options to choose from. As you can see here with the notes quick menu, and if I right click on the photo application, I can very quick and easily access my favorite images and scroll through them. So I really love how easy this is. Then if you just click and drag any application, you can move it around just like that. And it is so much easier doing it this way, using the mouse and cursor than it is traditionally using your finger. And of course, if you take one app and drag it on top of the other, it'll automatically create a folder. And from there, you can just name the folder to whatever you want. So it works the same as it would if you were using your finger, but doing it this way just really is so so much easier. Then a couple of other things you can do is if you take your cursor to the top left hand side of the screen by the time and date and click, it'll open up the notifications window. And here you can see all your latest notifications, of course. If you take the cursor to the top right hand side, it opens up control panel. And in the control panel, you can still control the brightness as well as volume, toggle the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi off. It's completely up to you and any settings you can change in the command center. So don't forget these quick tips when using your mouse, guys. <laughs> Then for anyone thinking, great, now I need a magic mouse and an Apple keyboard to do any of this. And the answer is no, you don't actually. You can use any wireless Bluetooth enabled keyboard and mouse connect them to your iPad and they will work just fine. I've actually been using the Logitech Pebble mouse as well as their K780 keyboard and they've been working perfectly fine with my setup. Obviously, because this isn't the magic mouse, I don't get all those gestures, but I'm actually okay with that. And speaking of gestures, let me show you guys some. 
So if you swipe down with your index finger, you will automatically open up the search section and this applies for the trackpad too guys. If you swipe left or right on your mouse, it will of course toggle between the various screens and open up the widget menu. Then if you take your mouse and quickly swipe down to the bottom right hand corner, it shows all your open applications and then to return back to home, just do the same gesture and swipe down to the bottom right hand side. You can also exit apps and return to the home screen by doing the exact same thing. Then for some super nifty keyboard commands and if you hold down on the command button and press spacebar, it opens up the search menu. If you click command and H, it'll take you back to the home screen. If you're on Safari, you can also use the up and down arrow keys to scroll through these web pages and check them out. Then the audio controls at the top of keyboards also work with the Spotify app. So you can pause and play music. You can toggle the volume up or down as well as skip tracks just as you see me doing here. And basically anything you would usually do on your computer. Another really simple one is holding down command and clicking tab. And that'll allow you to toggle through various applications. And if at any time you don't know any commands, just hold down the command button and it'll show you a menu of all the different things you can do using your keyboard. So if you're ever unsure, just hold that command button down and ba-bam, you'll know what to do. Then let's talk some nifty text tips because obviously it is so much easier placing the cursor within your text or paragraphs using the mouse than it is using your sausage fingers. <laughs> so selecting text works exactly the same as it would on a computer. You just click and drag and it selects just like that. If you double click on any word, it'll select the whole word for you. And if you triple click anywhere within a sentence, it selects the entire sentence. If you then click, hold down and drag, you can move that whole sentence just as you see here. And what I also really like is if you open up that split screen like I showed earlier in the video, then select some text, click, hold and drag, you can move all that text to another application. So I'm copying this whole paragraph from emails and popping it in notes. I love this. <laughs> Then onto some other cool new features that come with the update. If you head on over to your iCloud, you can now share folders. This is so awesome and it should have been added a long time ago, but now it's here and it's super duper simple. So you can share iCloud folders with any one of your contacts and you can also do this on your iPhone, of course. Just make sure you've got the 13.4 update on your iPhone. Next up, we've got some new Memojis. I think they added nine new ones in total, if I'm not mistaken. And here's just a little look at the ones they added. So I think it's Brilliant that we've got a couple more to choose from when messaging or WhatsApping our friends. I personally love using these and use them all the time actually. And of course, it is also available on your iPhone. So if you've already updated your phone, quickly whip it out and check out the new Memojis of yourself. They are so cool. Siri also got some updates and you can now actually tell her to take you back to the home screen. So if you open up an app and just say, hey, you know who, take me back to the home screen, she will automatically do it for you. I'm not sure why this was never available, but it is now and another really nifty update she got is called always listen so if you head on over to settings accessibility and then siri right at the bottom you will see this option that you can now toggle on that says always listen for hey you know who and what that means is if your ipad or iphone is off and is lying face down you can still ask her for anything and she will respond so just make sure this is also toggled on on your iphone if you want to take advantage of that new feature let me know in the comment section, guys, are you excited about this update and would you use a mouse with your iPad? If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe or you can check out some of my other videos right over here. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Toodles!